When 1941 rolled around, Victor Francis moved his family to 1725 32nd Street in San Diego, California. He was 33 years old and Myrtle Bell was 31 years old. Louis Sonny was 13 years old and little Victor Charles was two years old. My grandfather, Louis Rupert Erica, who I never had the opportunity to meet, was born on October 14, 1904, in San Luis Rey, California. My grandfather was 37 years old, and he was still in the United States Navy. He had recently married 21 years old Sabre Johnson, who was born on September 22, 1920, in Grand Valley, Colorado. Louis Rupert was soon to be stationed at Sangley Point, Canvide, in the Philippines, in a short time after they got married. On December 7, 1941, on a Sunday in Honolulu, Hawaii, the Japanese sent 353 aircrafts to attack the United States Navy ships in Pearl Harbor. 2,403 Americans were killed that morning, and there were 1,178 wounded. On the following day, on Monday, December 8, 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared war against Japan and said the disaster of bombing at Pearl Harbor was a date which will live in infamy. At that point in time, Louis Rupert Erica and his squadron VP-101 PBY-4 was ordered to fly down to Ambaum in the Dutch Indies. On the day after Christmas, my grandfather Louis Rupert Erica boarded his PBY-4 with 500-pound bombs rigged on the PBY wings, and along with five other PBYs of VP-101 were ordered on a bombing mission to the Holo Islands to attack a Japanese cruiser in the south tip of the Philippines. My grandfather Louis Rupert Erica was in the lead PBY-4 being flown by Lieutenant Burden R. Hastings, and when they arrived in the early morning of December 27, 1941, they were engaged by Japanese AA fire from the Holo Island. The PBY-4 was severely damaged and was able to safely land with the whole crew still alive. There was pilot Lieutenant Burden R. Hastings, Ensign Russell Franklin Chambers, Lieutenant Marsh Weston Miller, Jr., Clyde Harold Evans, Paul Roland Moses, Gerald Parks, Ammon Wesleyan Gates, and Louis Rupert Erica. My father, Louis Sonny was only 13 years old when he was contacted by his father's wife, Sabra, sending him a Western Union message at Victor Francis's Bono's home at 1725 32nd Street, San Diego, California, on January 10th, 1942. And the message read, your daddy reported missing by Naval Department, may see you soon, Sabra. What my father found out later in his life was that all of the men on the PBY-4 were captured by the Japanese and each of them were interrogated and then beheaded on the parade ground in the Japanese garrison. There were only two out of the six PBY crews that flew that day on December 27th, 
1941 that made it back alive to Ambom in the Dutch Indies. The other four PBYs never made it back home to see their wives and families. Victor Francis and Myrtle Bell's family were still living at 1725 32nd Street in San Diego in 1942. Victor Francis just turned 34 years old and he became a San Diego police officer. This must have come out of nowhere and it probably surprised my grandmother Myrtle. With World War II in the early stages of recruiting many young men for the Army, Navy, Marine, Army Air Corps, Coast Guard, and National Guard, it probably didn't leave many quality men to fill the ranks of the San Diego Police Department. I'm not saying that my grandfather, Victor Francis, wasn't a quality man, because he was and he truly had the intellect of a genius.